Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my flood damage Porsche 968. For those of you that are new to this channel, I'll give you a quick recap on this car and as to why I own it and what needs to happen to it. So back in July of 2021, um, there was a massive amount of flooding in the south of the Netherlands and parts of Germany, including the Eiffel region. That is where this car comes from. This car was in those floods when the um, rivers uh, broke their banks and flooded a whole bunch of towns. And if you see the footage I'm showing you now of this Porsche dealership, you can see the kind of silty water that was around this car. Um, this car was in a garage. Um, it didn't get any damage to the body. Uh, it was underwater up to about this level is where the waterline was written on the body. Flashback. It's got mud everywhere. So, I've got my work cut out for me on this one, but I think we can save it. Right, welcome to the disaster zone that is this interior. As you can see, I'll have to clean every single inch of this car. And uh, you can see also down there, there is a little bit of nastiness, but it's not too bad. The inside of this is dry. All right, so the jump pack has allowed me to pop the boot, which is good. And, uh, yeah, okay. This side looks nice and clean. That side looks nice and dirty. So um, we'll get all the stuff out of the car and I'll... Uh, I'll get it all cleaned as the days go by. End of flashback. I can promise you that everything in this car was covered in salt. And that is what this series has been about so far. Is cleaning it, trying to get things to work again. So I'll put a link for you guys up above so you can go follow along. Maybe catch up on the series as this is the kind of builds that you like. I'm at the point now where I'm almost ready to fully assemble the interior. In the previous episode, we finished the work on the HVAC under the bonnet i still need to do a couple of things inside the car make sure that it's clean in there as well i installed the rear seat belt we installed the new speakers so in this episode i'm going to focus on installing the dashboard and the glove box and all other things that needs to happen so we can try and get at least the interior done up to the point where i can install the seats so there's a lot that needs to happen so sit back Relax and let's start working. Right, so what I've been doing is I have been opening up all of these plugs so you can pop off this cover and I've been cleaning the insides and I sprayed them all with uh, contact spray. So this one, this one, this one, uh, this guy here, this guy here, that one down there as well. So all of these are now uh, cleaned for a second time. I cleaned this when I stripped the car initially, but I still saw here and there a little bit of salt covering these uh, plugs. I've also sprayed these guys again. This is for the uh, instrument cluster. So what I want to do now is go down here and you can see right there there's still some salt inside the HVAC so I need to take off this piping and that will allow me to um, do the final cleaning of the HVAC. So once that is done I think we are ready to bring the dashboard in. Look at that, that needs to be cleaned. Seventy five years later. All right. I gave up on filming this because it's impossible to film down here. But what I can tell you is to get this uh, vent off, there's a hidden bolt right down there. I'll see if I can get to it for you. Hopefully you can see it now. 
But uh, you have to get that screw out, and the only way to get out is to lie down here with your head and uh, fiddle it out. It's really tough, but I got it out. And I've also now cleaned this connector and this connector. So the driver's side of the HVAC is now clean and ready to go. All right, so I'm not sure how much of what I've done today has been captured on film because this was impossible work to do. But to give you a recap, I opened up every single one of these plugs. I took off every single cover. I took off every single vent inside here. I cleaned it. I've reassembled it. Um, I sprayed contact spray on every single thing that was open to try and give it a, a good fighting chance of working. Two days later. So just before we install the dashboard, you can see I have installed new foam on the HVAC itself. And I've also installed some foam taping on the tubing, the way it was when I took the car apart. So um, everything is now ready for me to bring the dashboard in. So I think that's what I'll do now. So that's the dashboard roughly in its spot. It's not tightened down yet with anything. There's no bolts in here. It's just sitting here with gravity and a bit of uh, friction. Uh, the cables are now routed correctly. I'm not 100% sure about this guy, uh, but I can fix it later. Once I get the fascia board in, then I'll know exactly where it goes. Um, I don't know if the cable should run through this hole or through there. I have suspicion that the cubby runs there, so I think the cables have to come through here. But we'll figure that out as we go. And if you look down here, you'll see the foam strips really sit nicely on the dashboard. So I think this will make for a nice airtight seal as far as that is possible. So what I'm going to do now is start bolting all of this stuff up to the bulkhead.
And so we stumble onto our first sequencing issue. I was too quick with these covers because this guy needs to go underneath here. So in order for me to do that, this has to come off again and then this has to go back on again. Five minutes later. Just like that. So this trim piece is tucked under this one. It's screwed into spot there. And then I screw this one in and put the cosmetic cover on there as well. So let's move on and get the rest of the stuff installed. <music> Right, so now we have all of these trim panels installed. I've got most of the switches installed. Uh, the ones that are still missing are the column stalks. Those I'll get to a little bit later. Um, and then for those of you that have been paying attention, know that I did not get a cubby hole or a cubby hole lid with this car. And I have been very lucky to find very, very good used examples from my friend at Inline4. I'll put the link in the description for you guys if you want to get good quality 944 968 parts i have done the modification to this lid using the metal brackets as you guys probably know these plastic brackets tends to break and this lid was no different it only had one bracket left and the other one was already completely gone so i've redone this, these with metal brackets and um, i've just given this a bit of a clean up it's not the best quality one but it was cheap and you'll never really see it so this is going in now and then I'll put the lid in and then we'll have the glove box done and then I think we'll move on to the switch gear. Right, so as I learn, you learn, this glove box insert, I guess you can call it, this comes off of a... 944 with an oval dash and i assumed it would fit because if this is an oval dash they look pretty much the same but after some investigation i realized that if you look at this part number there i hope you guys can see it but the part number is 944-552-049-00 this is an insert for dashboard without an airbag and it would seem that this guy is just a little bit wider in this area, which means I can't get it into that hole. And that means I can't get the lid on. So we'll have to move on to something else.
All right, we might need some more adjustment on this, but for now, this is in, so let's bring in the center console. Right, with the center console installed, it's time for me to unbox some new parts. Um, I have a new shift boot and I have a new ashtray that goes here. Maybe just for some reference, this is the ashtray that came out of this car. I'll keep it forever as this will be my keepsake for, for what this car looked like when I bought it. And then in these boxes, I have the new parts. Luckily with the 968, a lot of stuff is still available new. Original Porsche, so let's get this guy in. So that is the dashboard for 95% complete. As you can see, the cover art is still missing. Hopefully I'll get that within the next couple of days. I have a new radio, but that's not getting installed in this episode because that requires speakers and I'm not yet done with the doors. So that'll happen in a later episode, which means the last thing for us to install is the new steering wheel. And um, some of you might've seen that the original is hanging on the wall there. It's nice and clean. But I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of an upgrade because it's something I've always liked on these cars. And that is a club sport steering wheel, which I bought brand new from Porsche to match my new gear shifter. And there she is. So let's quickly get that on there. Right, so for now she's just mocked up unfortunately because I forgot one thing and that is that this slip ring that you use for a steering wheel airbag is not the same solution for the club sport steering wheel so I need to order a couple of parts but uh, nonetheless you get the idea I think it looks awesome I'm really happy with the result you'd never say this car was on a flood it looks brand new Thank you very much for your support and I hope that you like the results that we achieved in this video I know it's been a long one a lot of things had to happen. I think if you paid attention to the amount of times I changed clothing in this uh, video, you'll know that this took me many, 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 many days to get to this point. So many things had to get cleaned. So many things had to be fixed and adjusted and fiddled. 
uh, but I'm very, very happy with the result. And just before I end this video, I'd like to inform you guys that I have set up a Patreon and a Buy Me A Cup Of Coffee account. So should you want to support me on there, I would very, very much appreciate it. But anyway, this is where I'm going to end this video and uh, we'll see you next time when we continue the final details of this interior. And then it's time for us to go back under the hood and start working on the engine. Until next time, guys. Goodbye.